Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the Majefries Network on OpenTTD. Now today we are building the south end of the west coast line. Uh, now I have said this in the little bit that I do after the time lapse, but I'll say it again. This line is an extension of the Western Reaches line. The section between Monopole Falls and Preyborn is not part of the Western Reaches line. It's part of the, the main line between Sunnington and uh, Plindham Junction. But from Preyborn to the south to Sanley Central, which is the name of our new big terminus down in the southwest corner of the map, that is all the Western Reaches line. So we are going to be running the APT Express trains along that line. We're also going to be running the Double Decker trains along with a, a whole host of uh, freight trains and other sort of passenger trains that wouldn't normally run on UK railways. Now the majority of the line uh, is built fairly close to the sea. As you can see here we're starting at Preyborn which is right up against the sea. Um, some of the line is built in tunnels and cuttings like we're building here just so that we can get as close to the, the center of the towns as possible. Uh, but sometimes we do head quite a ways inland as you will see in just a second. We do connect up with the third rail network um, at Port Field, I think it is. Port Field sounds like a very familiar name. Let me just check that on my list. Yes, Port Field. Um, so we are going to have a connection there which does mean we're going to open up loads of connecting possibilities for other main lines across the map. Now again at, at the end of this episode I do mention in the, uh, the live section that I... Um, are going to alter the naming suggestions list. I have just done that before recording this section. Uh, I don't know why I decided to uh, arrange it the way I did. I recorded the time lapse last night. So you're watching this on Monday. So I recorded the time lapse on Sunday night. Uh, I then recorded the live section with no audio for the time lapse done. And now I'm doing the audio for the time lapse. I don't know. It's just the way I felt like doing it this, this uh, particular episode. It's not going to affect the quality, or at least it shouldn't affect the quality quality if it does I'll be slightly worried but uh, it, it I don't know it just means that the uh, the episode itself has been uh, organized a little bit chaotically so I'm trying to remember things that I've just said in the live section um, whilst also trying to remember the things that I said in the live section that I was going to say in this section so um, bear with me if I do forget some things one thing I do remember that I was going to talk about though was this little section here now um, because of the way the express tracks are laid out on the third rail side the, uh, the express tracks are on the eastern side, whereas the slow tracks are on the western side. I wanted to do the same for the line from Preyborn to connect up with this, which does mean that the express trains do cross over uh, at Preyborn, which isn't too bad. They're APTs, they can tilt. The idea is it would be a, probably a 75 to 100 mile per hour crossover, nothing too extreme. Um, all crossovers look the same on this game, but in my mind's eye, uh, there will be differences if this was to be built in the real world. And that sounds great, and it works really nicely. And at Portfield, we have the little connection there with the uh, the third rail line, and it's all really good. Uh, the reason I decided to put the express tracks from Preyborn down this way was so that the HSTs running from Plindham can just run continuously without having to slow down. My logic for that is diesel trains, particularly the HSTs, are quite slow accelerating. Electric trains are a lot faster with acceleration, so it makes more sense to have the electric trains slow down to cross over to the uh, fast line than it does to have the the uh, diesel trains do that. That does present a bit of a problem further down the line though because for some reason even though I built this section first I then forgot my system um, a little bit further along the line and decided to try and build the express tracks on the west side and the slow tracks on the east side and what that means is I've, I had to build a, a crossover between the two lines. I think I've gotten away with it in the end with how I've done it uh, I tried to be quite clever with it and actually build the um, the crossover incorporated into where the, the two tracks meet the high speed, not the high speed, the third rail line, um, using some bridges and some tunnels and some S-bends and things like that. I think I've gotten away with it. Uh, we'll see again in the live section. From what I've seen of it though, I've been through it a few times surveying the route to get the, uh, the trains in and also actually putting the trains in during the live section of the video. I think I've done a good job. Um, it's fairly obvious, uh, particularly as you watch me build it and rebuild it a couple of times when I notice my mistake. Uh, so it's pretty obvious where the, the crossover happens. I'm not trying to hide it in any way. In many ways, actually, it's better to not hide it and just be open about it because it's realistic still. There are times uh, in the real world where the lines do cross over, 
for various reasons. Normally when it's you're approaching a terminus station, uh, the lines cross so that the slow lines are both on one side and the fast lines are on the other side. Uh, but, you know, it can, it can happen for various reasons. Overall, with this line, I'm pretty damn happy with it. Uh, I do think it's unusual that there's a huge section of track where the third rail and overhead electrification are shared. But there are places in the world where, uh, I mean, good examples for me are in London, where trains cross between third rail and overhead. They tend to do it while stationary um, in London. So the Thameslink trains at Farringdon, uh, the overground trains at Kensington Olympia, I think it is. Uh, I'm sure someone will tell me. Someone's told me before, actually. George Silver's told me before, and I've forgotten. So, uh, a little reminder would be much appreciated. I think it, it's at Kensington. Um, in fact, if I just check my tube map, I'd probably be able to work it out. Uh, oh, no. I don't think it is Kensington. It's, it's between Richmond and Willesden Junction. I know that much. Uh, but anyway, those are two places where the crossover occurs. Um, I think also, oh yeah, on the uh, the Northern City line at, uh, let's get the rail map up as well, at, 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 at Drayton Park, I think is where it happens. Yeah, Drayton Park, uh, just before the trains run into the tunnels towards Moorgate. Um, that's the third example. I believe there are more. Um, places where it might happen but I can't think off the top of my head not that it's that important I mean three examples is pretty good the power of three and all that there are places in Europe and other places around the world actually where the transfer happens whilst the train is moving um, and that's quite clever there are things on overhead sections called neutral sections um, what they basically are is you can't stretch a wire from London to Manchester and have it constantly energised um, that has to be, I mean, you think about the amount of power that has to be provided, plus the fact that wires lose power the longer they are. Uh, so it makes it quite difficult for that to take place. So, um, they have energised the line at various sections along. So each line has its own substation at various points, um, and that substation provides power to that section of line. So that there are no power surges or drops in power, there are neutral sections. So the wire is still there, it's just not energized. Technical term, it means it's got no power in it. Um, you might notice this if you play games like Train Simulator, you'll notice there's little white signs uh, with a, I think it's a T and an upside down T, one on top of the other. Uh, that is the start of the neutral section and then there's a black sign with the same thing uh, in white, so on the white sign the, t the T's are in black and on the black sign the T's are in white. I think that's the end. It might be the other way around, I can't remember. Um, I, I picture in my head that that's how the transfer between third rail and, and overhead whilst the train's moving would happen as well. Uh, in old trains you will tell, you can tell very very easily if you're a passenger where the neutral sections are because the train will be going along and then it will suddenly judder as it feels like it's coming, like starting to slow down. And then it will judder again as it starts to speed up again. These neutral sections tend to be about 50 to 150 yards long. Something along those lines. Uh, the idea is the train should not stop during those sections because it's got no power. It will never get started again. It'll have to be rescued. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's how uh, it, the transfer would occur. Modern trains are allowed to coast. So you can actually keep the power on and it will coast without um, juddering, which is quite cool. Uh, I think it's got something to do with they have capacitors on board the train and store some energy, so as soon as the neutral section kicks in, uh, the capacitors start uh, dissipating energy, discharging energy, whichever word. It is. I think it's discharged, to be honest. Um, and it will keep the train moving constantly. So I figure that's how it works with the uh, the transfer as well. So the, the th let's say we're going from third rail to overhead, the, uh, the shoe will lift up off the third rail, the train will continue coasting at a constant speed, the pantograph will then go up and connect with the wire, and then the train will carry on uh, on overhead. Um, why we don't have that in the UK, I don't actually know, because that would make sense. Maybe it's just easier, uh, particularly on Thameslink, uh, it's easier to have the train stop 
to transfer from one to the other because there are times where I'm not sure if this would ever happen on the 700s but there were times with the 319s and the 377s where one or the other didn't work either the third rail uh, that the shoe wouldn't lower or the pantograph wouldn't raise um, and then the train ends up stranded if it's on the move because it, it either has to go backwards wrong line or um, it just has to sit there and wait for it either to start working again or for another uh, vehicle to come out and rescue it. At least if it's a, a station like Farringdon there are sidings um, if you come out of Farringdon towards Blackfriars on the right hand side in the tunnel uh, Snow Hill Tunnel I believe that one is uh, there are sidings, Snow Hill sidings, where the trains are kept if they're not being used, for example, or if there are failures of any kind, that's where they're stored. Um, so I know that's why that happens there. On the overground, I think it's the same thing. It's just easier to do it while stopped. So if there's a problem, you can detect it and you don't have to worry about stopping the train when you've got no power. Because uh, I imagine that is quite a heart in mouth moment if you're a driver and you suddenly realize that particularly if the brakes are controlled via the power as well and you're no longer in a powered section because your pantograph won't work so you have no way of applying the brakes I'm not sure if that, I'm sure there's a backup system for brakes because that sounds like a really bad uh, safety feature but uh, yeah I've talked way too long about transferring power it's really not that interesting for most people but uh, there you go we got that little section anyway along Portfield where uh, that happens, that shares voltage. Really that's just because I built the third rail and then realized that actually there was no room to the west of the third rail to build the overhead so it made sense to link it up. Plus, uh, as I say later on in this episode, it allowed the opportunity to connect with the third rail on same platform interchange rather than having to build brand new station platforms alongside the existing ones. You could just use the ones that are already there. Uh, the speed limits are pretty much the same. Uh, we've got the APTs that run on the express tracks. I am planning on putting javelins along that s service as well uh, that will use both third rail and overhead on that section. So um, it might go from one to the other or it might just stay on whichever one it's on. So if it's on third rail, it might stay on third rail or it might transfer over uh, and vice versa. So there's, there's a lot of operational flexibility. It's one thing I really, really like about this map. Um, I touched on it in episode 200 and I think I touched on it again a little bit more in 201 but uh, I'm really really liking the fact that we're linking all these main lines up together it's one of the things I think was really really missing from the last map was the flexibility um, but yeah apart from that uh, we carry on building our line we have a big interchange station at and I always forget the name Kindinghatton Parkway uh, where sorry I just thought I'd miss, uh, missed something or messed something up there but I was looking at the wrong thing uh, yeah Kindinghatton Parkway so there are six platforms on the slow lines there's four platforms on the fast lines and there's a load of storage sidings as well uh, that's sort of my hub for the western reaches south Sanley is obviously the main hub of this little section because it's the terminating station it's also the start point for the uh, the south coast line which we will build in future episodes um, but I really felt like we needed uh, another sort of major interchange station. There are a few stations along the line where interchanges can happen, but um, I don't know. It just, it just felt like it was too big a distance between Monningpool Falls and Sanley. We kind of had to have another big hub station. It could also be in the future where services start from. Uh, now, Kinding. I always forget the name. Where is it? Kindinghatton Parkway. I'm going to have to put that somewhere so I don't forget it. Kindinghatton Parkway um, isn't built near Kindinghatton, I should say. It's built quite a ways away. Uh, in fact, I can't. I think I've already built it on camera at this point from what it looks like. So you would have already seen it go in. Um, that's where the Parkway name comes from. We have the same thing with Buntbourne, I believe it is, on the third rail line. Uh, we've got Buntbourne Parkway and then the next stop is Buntbourne Town. Uh, that's not necessarily the case with this one. We don't have a Kingdom Hatton Town, but we do have a Kingdom Hatton Parkway. In the UK, Parkway tends to be uh, the name used for a station that is built outside of the town uh, as like a park and ride kind of thing. 
Um, so Oxford Parkway is a good example. Didcot Parkway is another good example. Uh, the idea for those particular stations being um, it means you don't have to drive into Oxford or Didcot. You can actually go to the station, park your car there. Not so much for Didcot actually because there isn't another station in Didcot as far as I'm aware. But Oxford, um, Oxford Parkway is on the Chilton uh, services. So you get a train from there into Oxford Central. Um, and it's just an easy way of getting into the centre of the city. Particularly with Oxford, it's not a very car friendly city now. They're trying to stop cars. There are a lot of pedestrianised streets now. Uh, so it's it's improved transport into Oxford um, a lot more. And I'm trying to think of some more parkway stations. Uh, Luton Airport Parkway. That's a good one actually. Because you can, especially in a couple of years time. Because they're planning on building a uh, a rapid transit system between... Um, the station and the actual airport because at the moment you have to get off the train at Luton Airport Parkway which is something like 15 minutes away from St Pancras which is pretty fast considering um, and then you have to take a bus up to the airport which takes about 20 to 30 minutes so you're almost doubling your journey driving two miles up the road and you are getting the train 30 miles up to Luton so uh, they are planning on building a, a, a little trans rapid system well, that's not trans rapid because that's maglev, but they're building a, a um, people mover. That's probably the right word uh, that will connect the station with the airport, and it looks quite good from the plans. It's going to be quite a nice bridge that they're building uh, across. I forgot the name of the road now, but um, it's the main road that runs into the airport. Uh, this the plans are available online, I'm sure. So uh, if anyone's interested, do check that out. But yes, Luton Airport Parkway is a good example of a parkway station because. Uh, there's Luton Main Station, and then there's Luton Parkway, uh, Luton Airport Parkway, which is like a mile away from the main station. Uh, I think it's only really Thameslink trains that stop at Airport Parkway. Maybe some East Midlands trains do stop there as well, but um, as far as I'm aware, it was just Thameslink. But yeah, it's a way of get connecting to the airport. Um, that's a really good example of a parkway station. So Kingding Hatton is is just that. It's a parkway station. I will build some bus routes that connect it to Kingding Hatton as, and some of the other surrounding towns. Uh, maybe even a light rail system that does that as well. well. We'll have to see on that one. Right, you're currently watching me build Sanley on the screen. Now Sanley, I had to do some demolition in order to get Sanley in. Um, it, it felt like a, a good coincidence, let's say, that the, the two main lines were coming in almost exactly in the centre of the city. I had to do a little bit of deviation to get the lines around the, uh, the depot that I end up building. But um, it made it very easy just to demolish uh, a, a row of houses, or and roads I suppose, uh, into Sanley and then build the station as close to the city centre as possible uh, without causing too much destruction. And uh, I've got the video editing on one screen. I've got Sandy open on the other screen on, on OpenTTD. And it looks a nice station. I wanted to go for a mix of the old and the new. So you can see I've used two tower blocks uh, to show the new. And then the glass roofed stations. Which I've used quite a lot actually. Because Sunnington um, is built very similarly to this station. But I, I suppose uh, when you think about main lines. A lot of them... Um, the Great Central Main Line is a very good example. A lot of the stations were built to a standard design. Uh, so the station buildings themselves might have had a bit of uniqueness. Uh, I know particularly, I think it was Leicester Central, um, was built out of blue stone. Uh, and it looked very unique compared to the other stations along the route. Sometimes they're built out of local materials, which is why they would look a little bit different to uh, other stations along the route but majority of the time they are all built to a standard design so they look very very similar another really good example is uh, the Charles Holden designed stations on the underground they are very 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 similar uh, so that's kind of what I was going for here Sunnington is the northern end of the uh, the west coast line Sanley's the south end they are very very similar in appearance in terms of the glass roof uh, we've also then got the oval shaped roofs either side of that that was really just because I didn't want the glass to cover the whole thing. I wanted the glass to go between the two tower blocks and then have the other platforms slightly different. 
I might get rid of the oval roofs in the end because they do look a little bit out of place uh, compared to the rest of the station. I think it might even be better just to have no roof over the track uh, and just put some shelters on the platform maybe. Um, that might end up looking nicer. Uh, in terms of the ratio, I think it's five platforms. Yeah, five platforms for the stopping services and seven for the express. That means we're going to have to run a lot of express services from Sanley in order to make that feasible. Uh, the option is there to swap it round. So there's seven st uh, stopping platforms and five express. I could end up doing that in the end. That might end up being the better option. Um, but yeah, I like Sunley. I think Sunley's a really nice station. I like the way that the track layout's been done. I like the station throw. It it fits very nicely. Uh, all the signals have been set so that um, the outer signals only allow trains in if they're going straight out again. Although on the express services that's slightly different because I put some sidings on the uh, the west side of the station throat so that some express services can go into the Sandley platforms and then reverse into the sidings to clear the platforms for other services and then when it's time for them to leave again they'll head back into Sandley, pick up passengers and then head off back to the north. Uh, one thing also to remember is we are going to have trains coming from the south coast also running into Sanley, uh, the same platforms. So um, it's good to have that operational flexibility of being able to swap how many platforms are stopping and how many are express. Uh, we don't even necessarily have to change the platform lengths, we just change what the signals are programmed to. Um, yeah, I mentioned this again later on in the episode, like a well-oiled machine. I'm finding it a lot easier now to just go in and build these lines. Um, the, I find it tedious more than difficult these days, which I suppose is a good thing, because it means I'm getting better at it. I'm still not the perfect builder, and I never will be the perfect builder, if I'm being brutally honest with myself, because I don't want to be the perfect builder. I don't want to get it right first time. I do actually quite like it sometimes when uh, I build something and it doesn't necessarily work instantly, and I have to try and figure out what's not working about it. That does make things fun. Um, it can be a little irritating sometimes if it's like 3 o'clock in the morning and I still can't get it to work. Then yeah, I'll be a little bit stressed out and a little bit annoyed. But it is still part of the game. It's part of the game and it's part of the fun. Uh, sort of trying to uh, to make this work. Um, it is very satisfying when I do build a main line and program the signals. And this was a really good example when I did the, uh, the line from GSG to Gronwell Superior. Uh, the northern trunk route, not the high speed line, where I got the, the first Pendolino out and it ran perfectly between GSG and Gronwell. I didn't have to change any signals, I didn't have to rebuild any lines or anything. It went from A to B perfectly, stopped at all the right places, ran on all the right tracks. That was incredibly satisfying. Perhaps I'd have liked one or two things to go wrong, just so I had a little bit of tweaking and fixing to do, but uh, you know, sometimes, particularly as I just finished recording episode 200, I was feeling under the weather, my voice had gone, um, I was feeling really, really cruddy, to be honest. Uh, still am, really, two two weeks later. Still uh, feel a little bit under the weather, but um, anyway, that's that's, uh, that's me digressing again. Um, it was really, really nice to get the train just working first time. Um, and I'm hoping that's the same with this line as well. I have double checked, I haven't yet triple checked all the signals. Uh, sometimes I just double check and then I start running trains and we find out. Um, I think this here is me realizing that I put the express and the stopping on the wrong side. Um, so I do move some platforms and then I go and start moving tracks and all kinds of things. Uh, as for the signals, since I was talking about them, I did do some of the signal programming on, on this time lapse, but you probably can't see it because it is quite fast. Uh, if anyone wants me to do a little sort of mini tutorial on how I do my signal programming, I'm more than happy to do that. Just drop a comment down below and, and, and ask about it and I'll, I'll happily do that for possibly the next episode because we are building another line next episode, so um, that that will work out well for me. Um, as I say, I'm not the best. I'm by no means the best. I think uh, if you want a real signaling tutorial, Lieutenant Joker's videos are the ones you want to watch, uh, as is the case with most tutorials actually, because he's, he's very, very good at the game and he's also very, very good at explaining how he does certain things. Um, 
when he first told me about randomized orders, I didn't really know what he meant. So he actually went and made a video uh, for everyone to watch, but he, he directed it towards me about how to do randomized orders. Um, and it was a really, really good tutorial, actually. It helped me out a lot. It's unfortunate that randomized orders never really found their place in this network. Um, I tried using them with some services, so whether trains went through to GSG or whether they diverted and went to Bartholomew Square. Uh, on paper, it sounds really good, and I really, really, really wanted it to work. It was just unfortunate that for the, the type of network I'm trying to build, it relies heavily on timetabling and getting trains in and out when they're supposed to um, and not deviating and not running off timetable. Uh, and that's what ended up happening with the randomized orders, unfortunately. Because um, you can't timetable the randomness. It made it really strange. You ended up with six trains trying to run on one section and just one on the other. And it, it, it didn't really work uh, that well in the end. There's nothing wrong with the orders and there's nothing wrong with the uh, the idea behind it. I think it works really well if you're not doing timetabling. That's the uh, the key. And I don't even think there's a way of making it so that timetabling would work with it, to be honest, because it is so uh, difficult to predict randomization, because, you know, clues in the name, it's random. Um, even if you manage to get a perfect timetable, there's a good chance it will try and run from A to B via C, uh, and instead it, it kicks onto the, uh, the randomizer where it goes to D and it's timetable to run to C and it's trying to run to D and you end up with it completely out of whack. It's a strange one. It's a strange one. It's disappointing but I can understand why it's the case. Like I, I don't complain about it at all because I, I for one couldn't fix it and I can't imagine um, many other people could because in my head I've always got it as if it was doable it would be done by now. Uh, so yeah that's just the way it is. I'm not complaining. I don't want to complain because I love this game. Uh, I was so happy when I found out this game existed. And yeah, even now, there are times where I sort of think, do I really have to record an episode? And that tends to be when I'm feeling tired or just not great. The majority of the time, uh, I get really excited about these episodes. And I hope you guys get excited about watching them too. Because um, I know when I find a series on YouTube that I really, really enjoy. I look forward every day to the next episode coming out. Um, if it, particularly if it's a YouTuber that does do daily videos, that always brightens up my day. And it's the same really with making these videos. I know that on a Friday, um, you know, the weekend is spent going to the football, which I really enjoy, or watching the football on TV, which I really, really enjoy. And then there's always one little bit of me that goes, ah, and you get to record Open TTD again. Uh, particularly in building this line, there were times building up to episode 200 where I was starting to get bored of doing the same thing over and over again. But I knew I had to, otherwise episode 200 wouldn't have worked. Uh, the idea for that was building loads of main lines and then episode 200 putting loads of trains out. Really, I like building the lines. I have more interest in railways than I do in trains. Um, but there are times, like this episode in particular was a really, really good one for me for building the main line. There have been more times recently where I've actually preferred putting the trains out because I like scheduling as well. And, and uh, I think network was a really good name to use for this series because I do like networks. I like building systems and watching them run. Uh, you'll notice if, if you watch me on Minecraft as well, I'm always looking to make things automated. Not because I'm lazy, but because I enjoy just sitting back and watching things work. That's That's kind of where I get my kicks from might sound a little bit dull to some people but um, if you're in the know and you know what I'm talking about then you you definitely know what I mean it's uh, it's really really fun just to build something and just sit back and watch it go um, I've, I mentioned this I can't remember if I mentioned this just now or whether I'm going to mention it in the live section because what I mean about my memory um, but I'm planning on doing some episodes where we just watch trains run along the network so uh, I'm going to try and do a train running from each main station in Guard City to its far reaches. So, a, you know, a high-speed train from GSG to Gronwell or a high-speed train from GSG to Plenborough and then the Pendolino or the 91 from GSG to Gronwell. Um, maybe GSG to Sunnington on the Eurostar uh, or GSMI to Sunnington on the APT. Could do both. 
depends what you guys want to see. Um, but then also just do ones where we go to busy stations along the network. So, um, Moningpool Falls is a really, really busy station. Wenfin Field is relatively busy. Uh, stations like Honingville is a busy station. Even Dombra, although the fast trains just go straight through and don't stop, there's still a lot of train activity there. Uh, and just do like a little like 15 minute time lapse of just looking at the station and seeing all the trains that go through. Maybe put some little captions below saying this is the such and such service to such and such. That kind of thing. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be part of the main series. I might just release them as a sub-series. But that's, that's kind of what I want to do now. I've built the network. I want to watch it run. And I'm sure you guys do too. Uh, talking of watching things run, we are about to end this time lapse and we're going to head over into live mode and we're going to uh, put some trains out on the track. So I'm going to stop talking now, the music's going to die down very very shortly and we're going to join myself in the past. Okay guys, we are back, we have finished the time lapse build. That was quite tricky actually, building that line. Um, Trying to keep my morals of not demolishing too much kind of went out the window a little bit there, as I'm sure you all noticed. Uh, in the end, we went a little bit, a little bit crazy with the old bulldozer, but uh, hopefully, um, no one's too upset by that. It's one of those things that, that can't necessarily be helped. Anyway, we're over here at GSMI. I'm probably going to have to do some platform extensions here uh, to allow more APTs to stop here, or demolish a couple of streets and add a couple of extra platforms in, although I'm not entirely sure that's feasible for getting the trains across. Uh, perhaps it would be. Um, we're in a working in some tight cramped conditions here, so it could end up being that actually I move the station this way a little bit, or you know, move the freight platforms over to these streets here, or just eradicate them all together and have all the mail services come out of GSP, which is actually relatively quiet right now. We'll, we'll see. Um, so we're over here at GSMI because we're going to get some trains out on the uh, the network again. We're very busy on the old trains. In fact, let me update the counter as to how many trains now we are going to have. Do I just press something now? Just elbowed my keyboard. Very professional. So if I update this number to uh, let's go a thousand. So we're going to end up with 234 trains on the network by the end of today's episode that we've added since episode 200, I should uh, emphasize. We've got way more than that out on the line in, in total. We're getting close to a 1,000, actually, uh, in terms of total number of trains. Anyway, let's get the trains out on the line. Uh, I won't do the timetabling on camera. Or I probably won't do all of the timetabling on camera. I might do the stop times, but I won't do the uh, speed limits or anything like that. Because that's a little annoying and a little fiddly and tricky and I don't particularly enjoy doing it on camera. Pretty sure you guys won't enjoy watching it on camera either. So uh, I think that's a win-win situation for everyone. Right, let's get that there. So this new franchise is going to be the Western Reaches franchise. Uh, because we do literally now reach all the way along the West Coast. Um, so that makes sense to me. Uh, I think I should also expand. Yeah, you're fast. You're slow. We're going to unshare you. You're going to now share with that. So you're fast as well. Right, you're going to go here. Um, you are then going to go... There. Yep. And then here. Here here, 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 uh, under there, and round and into there. You are service, you are no loading, no unloading, you are unload, no loading. Okie dokie, right, there's a buzzing noise in my ear, I really need to get a new headset. Um, that needs to go high up on my priorities list, most definitely. Apologies if that's annoying anybody. If anyone else can hear it, that is. If it's just me, then it's annoying, but it's okay. Uh, if everyone can hear it, then it's not so great. 
Right, I hate coming out of GSMI. I'm really going to have to rebuild this. Or at least change some of it so it's not all fiddly and annoying like it is at the moment. Because uh, this is not exactly great. How many trains use this? Is it just the cargo? Yeah, the cargo and the mail. Okie dokie. Makes my life easier. How are we doing here? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. And this, which wasn't uh, populated at all when we built the uh, HLR station, is now very populated. So that's worked out quite well. Right, we're on the relatively easy bit of the track now because it's pretty much up as far as Wenfing Field. Um, we go full tilt. To be honest, even Wenfing Field. I think I've put Renfing Field on the uh, the schedule. Uh, so I will have to change that on all of them. But um, yeah, Wenfing Field is it's a pretty easy station to stop at. So is Moningpool Falls, really. Uh, now that we've done all the rebuilds and everything, it's a lot easier to stop at. Okay, so we come into Moningpool Falls. And then we come out via here. Um, and then I believe it's full tilt along here, is it not? It's just the freight trains that go via this waypoint. Yep, cool. Freight seems to be behaving itself now. I did a couple of changes over at Guard City North Freight Terminal, and I think they had a, a good effect. Uh, as I say, the freight trains seem to be behaving themselves. We'll see. I think this stretch down here, um, the APTs might be held up a little bit, but the maximum speed, I believe, is 100 miles an hour anyway. So uh, double check that. It might be 125. It is 125. Okay. That's still not the worst thing in the world. Um, so we go through here. Now this particular service, Preborn, is a waypoint, not a stop. Uh, for speed limit reasons. So we will put those in now. So don't forget. After Preborn, next stop is... Portfield, but we do have to swap lines here. Uh, I'll mention this in the time lapse. I haven't actually recorded the audio for the time lapse at this point, so um, I'm going to have to remind myself to mention it. But um, yeah, the little bit over here, where are we? All the way over here. Um, it was a little bit weird how I decided to do the express tracks because I had to do the express tracks on the left here join up and then for some reason when I got down to the uh, the, the really south part of the uh, the western reaches line uh, which this is now an extension of um, I got it the wrong way around which wasn't particularly good it doesn't look like we stop at Portfield I think it's the next service we have that stops at Portfield uh, so the APTs are going to rocket through here uh, and then they're going to go over this little hump which must be quite fun to ride on in real life you get a little bit of air time there. Uh, so your next stop is Kingding Hatton Parkway, which is a long way away, if I remember rightly. There it is. Not too far as it turns out. But yeah, I think I managed to switch the lines over pretty effectively. The, the jury's out a little on that one, I suppose. But um, I did my best. Uh, Sanley is the final stop on this. So I think from here... Yeah, I should be able to just rock it on through. Um, where are the crossover points? I think, yeah, over here. Just want to confirm that this has... the right waypoints. So what are you? Drawing head waypoint, drawing head waypoint. Cool. Alrighty then. So uh, we're going to go here twice. Um, we're going to go here twice. We're going to go here twice. And then we're going to go 
uh, like that and here twice and then we're going to go into here just to get the uh, the train out of the way for a little bit no loading no unloading uh, no unloading okay so that's the first one done I think we'll just leave it like that I won't do the stop times or anything like that right now I think I'll just leave it I do like the design of this by the way I haven't quite lined it up how I wanted to but I do like the idea that the the parking for the station is underneath the station I think that's a really cool idea and I, I like the way that it's sort of embedded yes I had to do a lot of demolishing to get the uh, the station this close to the city center but I think overall it will work out and to be honest Sanley's quite a big town anyway um, and yeah considering this is a major hub I've only got the uh, the platforms in at the moment for the Western Reaches line eventually we're going to have the South Coast line as well which is going to be the one that, that loops around that way um, we're going to end up with lots and lots of trains coming through Sanley so uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that design overall considering I, I, I pretty much made it up on the fly uh, improvised it as I went along which you know it works Worked very rarely for me, but it worked this time around. So, um, yeah, can't complain. I think it's the lesson to take from that. Cannot complain. Right, that's all of that done. Service up the top. No loading, no unloading. You are unload all, no loading. Right, same again. Um, here twice and then here twice and then all the way over to here twice I feel like we need we do need an extra waypoint I think I might use this one as an extra waypoint so if I select you again like so and then on the way back after Winfing Field you go by that again there we go right um, so after Conwell then it's Winfing Field pretty much every APT stops at Winfing Field and Moningpool Falls because it's it is possible to run a train straight through, but it's a big... I mean, these are both big towns. Wenfingfield especially is massive. Is that 62,000? 52,000 people. And it's huge. You can see it. It's almost as big as Guard City when you look at it. There's Guard City. There's Wenfingfield. It's huge. <laughs> and it's all solid houses as well. Apart from the station, there's nothing really that breaks up the, the, the city. Uh, so it makes sense that all the, the fast trains would stop here. Same with Moningpool Falls. It might not be a big town in its own right, but considering where it is on the line, it's where the, the line divides into two, either up to the north towards Sunnington or down the south towards Sanley. So it makes sense that all the fast trains would stop here. I might have to have a look at some of the stop times, because we're going to have a lot of APTs running through. They won't all be able to stop. Uh, sorry, that doesn't make sense. They all run through. Um, you want to be able to make sure they get in and out. Uh, just have a little stretch there. Uh, you want to make sure they can get in and out relatively quickly. So, um, yeah, I might have to take out the terminating platforms completely. Uh, you can see I've, I've left the tracks there just in case that is what we end up doing. We'll have to wait and see. The only way to find out how well this is going to work is to actually throw trains in and, and, and watch what happens. So uh, It could end up working out really well or it could end up working out really, really badly. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. Now I should stress at this point, I, I talk about this West Coast line being an extension of the Western Reaches line. Um, it is and it isn't. I suppose. It is in the sense that from here, Pendingbury South, it is an extension of the Western Reaches, except that the express tracks are no longer uh, inside the 
the stopping tracks they're parallel to. But this section between Preybourne and Monningpool Falls really is part of the line that also goes up towards Sunnington. It's part of like the western, the, or, I don't know, the west coast line, let's call it for now. Uh, again, I'll put the, um, I keep meaning to do it. I will do it tonight, I promise. I will update the name ideas list so people can name roads and, and uh, rail routes and things like that. Uh, hopefully someone else hasn't already done it because that would be quite irritating to be honest, but there you go. Uh, your non-stop fire is good. So yeah, this section here is an extension of the Western Reaches. When the Great Western Line joins up, and this little line here might not look like much right now, but actually it opens up the avenues so much for more routes. For example, now we can run Great Western trains from the big station... Uh, that's Fort Flonwood. The big station over here, uh, Munfingford, Paragon. We can now run trains from here down towards Sandley. Also, uh, not so much from the Great Western line, but um, this little section here, run along the third rail here, joins up with the Great Western line here, and then goes up this way. So actually this is where Munfingford is, so trains from this way will run down the third rail line here and join up with the, uh, the Western Reaches line. But also from this way we can have cross-country trains, um, we can also have maybe trains that can run on third rail and overhead so we can get some javelins that run here. I'm actually tempted to run some javelin services between uh, Gronwell Superior and Sandley Central via Guard City. So it will run straight through here and then connect. It would have to stop here to do the transfer over or at least that's what it will be like in my head at least. Um, and then it will carry on down this way and then transfer to the overhead. I like those ideas. It opens up so many op options. I particularly like the idea of cross country and I really like the idea of running the javelins because I want to do one real long distance service using the javelins. Uh, I think that will look really, really, really cool. Particularly to ride on. Uh, I'm thinking of making some sort of one-off specials showcasing some of the main lines. So the majority of which will be running from GSG. Uh, not GSG, sorry. Guard City. GSG will be one of the stations, obviously, but running from Guard City um, to various points on the map. Uh, so to have a train that runs from the northeast corner down to the southwest corner would be a really good way of showing that off. Uh, and because I'm talking and not really paying attention to what I'm doing, uh, I've lost track of what stations. This is Portfield, so the next stop is Kindinghatton Parkway, which is straight across here. Yeah, I do like this still crossover. I think it, it's worked out quite well. The fact that it's APTs as well, they're tilting trains, uh, it means that you know it won't be as uncomfortable to go across that little S-bend. Right, can you get out the Parkway? And then here. The next stop after Kindinghatton is Tenley. So that's quite a ways away, Tenley, there we go, and then Punfingford Promenade, it's quite a nice name, that's where the tracks diverge here. Okay, and then from Punfingford it's a straight slog down to Sanley. Like so, like so, and like that, like that, like that, and like that. Okay, you are no loading, you are no loading, no unloading. Oh, I think I did it the wrong way around, but there you go. Uh, and you are no unloading. I don't think I need to do that one, but I always do it anyway. Alright, and then the last one is the all stopper, supposedly. It's the all stopping express train. Uh, I don't even know if that makes sense. We'll find out, won't we? I just realised I probably should have. Um... Hang on. 
get rid of you for a second. How many trains are on the first one? Six. So if I clone this one four times, one, two, three, four, then clone this one, uh, and then get rid of that one, and then clone that one again, and then grab you, and you should be the right one. If you stop at Tenley, yeah, cool. Right, and then you need to be cloned six times also. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now we can get the final one. I say the final one. I mean, it's the final. Uh, oop, you are not part of this. You are of your own orders. If you can hear that creaking noise, that's my knee leaning against the. Uh, <laughs> sounds so stupid saying it out loud. It's my knee leaning against my air conditioning unit in the end of October. We don't need air conditioning anymore, but I've still got it in my room for the time being. I think it doubles as a heater, uh, which would be very handy. Um, but it's got the uh, the little um, vent on the top that opens and it's got a very creaky hinge so apologies if you could hear that creaking noise right as I said this is the long one um, so it might take a little bit longer than well it will take definitely most definitely it will take longer than the other two uh, but that's alright isn't it and what I will do off camera is the other two APT services the one up to Sunnington I'll probably leave untouched but the one to Plindham I will change. Uh, I do like the idea still of having the APTs go to Plindham. I think that's going to be quite a key uh, station on the network. So um, I will keep that service running. And it will obviously stop at Winfingfield and Morningpool Falls as well. Uh, I think w the one I will change is Preyborn. I think I'll take Preyborn off of the, uh, the stop list for reasons that I will show you in just a second. Right, so usual trick over to Wenfingfield. I'm not going to put too many services out on camera. Um, I will do lots off camera. I'll probably do the cross country ones and maybe even the Great Western ones off camera. Uh, so, I mean, you guys, I like putting trains out on the network, and I'm sure you guys enjoy watching me put trains out on the network as well, but it can get incredibly repetitive. So, I think it's easier if I tell you what I'm going to do and then go ahead and do it off camera and then when we come back next time show you that I've done it I think that's probably the easiest way of, of actually uh, organizing these episodes now because we did go a long time without any trains and now we've got a load of episodes with all trains so um, there isn't really a healthy mix right now it's a very much a case of one thing for ages and then another thing for ages so uh, I will try and mix things up a little bit more uh, I'll check what the episode plan is for next episode actually and see um, see what that is, I think it's building another main line isn't it, we planned it out yeah constructing the line between Guard City East and, and the Northern Trunk Route and introducing more cross country services so we will we, we'll, uh, can't speak now um, we'll be doing lots of building and uh, and running trains next time out as well I'd be interested to see what you guys think of this new whoops, way of doing episodes where um, like in the past we built a line or we put out some trains. Now I'm trying to do the line building and the train building in the same episode. Uh, it would be interesting to get some, well it would be nice to get some feedback. Uh, do you guys like that or do you think it's a little bit pointless? Uh, do let me know. Comment section is what it's for. Uh, the other thing I would say is I, I looked at the I mean the view count for episode 200 is still going up and that's great the fact that it's been two weeks now uh, almost two weeks since that episode went live and you guys are still it is two weeks isn't it yeah and you guys are still watching it that's good um, if there's anyone that's watching it twice then very good 
uh, you get a big thumbs up from me for that because four hours is a long, long time to sit and watch an episode. So if there's anyone out there who's watching it for the second time, uh, huge credit goes towards you. Um, the only thing that's a little bit disappointing on my stats at the moment, because even the last two episodes were pretty good, uh, the only one that's really disappointing me is the sub count. Um, you know, we've set the target to try and get a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Hopefully you guys are all spreading the word of the channel, because uh, that that's what really makes the difference, is the word of mouth. But, um, seems like some people are unsubbing from the channel as well, which tells me that there's perhaps something not quite right with what I'm doing. Uh, so feedback, that's what it's, it's what it's for guys. If there's anything that you want me to change, if there's anything that you think's missing from particular episodes, do let me know, because chances are uh, I can very easily put that back into the episodes. Um, I know that we had that huge slog building up to episode 200, um, and towards the end, it wasn't so much that I'd run out of ideas, it was a case of I was trying to fit so much in uh, of building, so that when we came to episode 200, we had that whole period of just throwing trains in, and we built the new uh, high-speed line, and a lot went on in that episode. Uh, and now it's sort of quieting down again. Um, I mean, we're still doing big build projects. This is probably the longest main line that I've built. Uh, I mean, the high-speed line was pretty long, but it was two tracks, and it was relatively easy because you just dig tunnels everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a case of if the balance isn't quite right between building and putting trains out, then do let me know because uh, there's every chance that I could fix that for the next episode. I am still recording episodes in advance, or trying to. Some of the footage from this episode, like this is actually being recorded on the day that it's supposed to be going up, so um, it's not always working out. But it's kind of why I start planning in advance. I plan my episodes about a week in advance, maybe two weeks. Uh, I mean, after I've finished recording this episode, I'm going to plan out the next four or five, just so that they are planned at least, and I can just spend the time actually recording them. Uh, take a little tangent from that for a second. Uh, this train I'm not having go into the sidings because it's 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 an express train, but I'm classing it as a stopping service of an express train. So it's going to do what all the other stopping trains do. It's going to go in. It's going to come straight out again. Uh, so then, yeah, that's why I'm doing that. Anyway, next up, uh, I want cargo capacity passengers somewhere. There's that one, which could look quite good actually. I might do that one. What's the capacity on these? 600. What about the KISS? It's 480 in the smallest unit, 540 in the biggest. Top speed of U is 100, top speed of U is 101 which really doesn't make much difference. Running cost, the KISS is cheaper. Uh, the weight, it's lighter. Power, it's got more. Tractive effort, it's got less. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference though. Uh, it's got a higher reliability, but I don't think that counts for me anyway, because I'm not doing breakdowns. Although I think reliability also relates to the, uh, the operating cost. I think, just to be different, on this particular route, I'm going to go with this one, which I think was, was it called the Bison? Yeah, Bison. Interesting name. Not quite sure of the origins of that. Perhaps someone could tell me. I think there's variations of the Bison. Yeah, there's a, a smaller one here as well, which I think I need for the next uh, service. Oh, I didn't clone this train. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Knew I forgot something. Okay, so that's a load of APTs we're about to introduce. You know, the world's going to explode uh, when that happens. I think, yeah, there's another small bison. I'm going to be using this one as well. So I'm going to go against protocol and I'm going to leave that window pinned there for now. Right. Here. Here. Here, here, here. 
nice and easy. This train care facility is quite small. I was going to use it to run some APTs as well, but I think, given how small it is, we could still do it. If we just have one, maybe, that originates here. Because Stanley's quite a big station, so we want to get as many trains running in and out of it as possible. Uh, but I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to have another train care facility over here for the stopping services, and this will end up just being for the APTs. I think that's what's going to end up happening, but I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Right, that, like so, and then like so, uh, and that's all of them. Cool. Right, next stop over here, Buntill East. And then, I mean, this one is an all stopper for now. Uh, let's scroll down to the right one, shall we? There we go. So, Tintford, the next one's New Rondinghatton. Some of these town names. It's better than Fartbridge, I suppose. I mean, I think any name's better than Fartbridge. Right, and then this train's going to deviate. I quite like this idea of uh, the the history of this route would be the original line was f was two track all the way and it was the two uh, stopping tracks which is why it deviates here and goes around the bay and then they built the express tracks when the APTs came in uh, alongside the stopping tracks and then instead of going all the way around the bay they just went across it. Uh, those brown lines will disappear. I did that so I could mark out where the bridges needs to start and end. But I like that idea. I like the fact that this network has a history as well, even though technically it's brand new. It's all brand new. But um, the history of the line would go back quite a long way. Uh, if that makes any sense. It's like a fake history. Do we stop at Chonwell? I don't think we do. Flindingstone, the next one is Seddinghead. Seddinghead or Slindinghead? Seddinghead. Which is... up here. So yeah, here we... I mean, it's technically a semi-fast, this one. But I've categorised it as a stopping train. Um, it's I, I might have to look at my, my classifications again because some of them are inaccurate I mean it's one of those things what is a stopping train and what is a semi fast train That's I might just have to look that up the exact definitions because it could well be that I have classed them properly uh, it just doesn't feel like it because for me a stopping train is a train that stops at all stations whereas a semi fast is one that, that would go through a few uh, a long route without stopping. So we'll have to see on that, won't we? Right, uh, you go here, 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 and then here. You are unload, no loading, you are no loading, no unloading. Okay. Uh, and you have nine trains in your order. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Unpin you, grab you. Pin over here. Close you. Scooch back over here. Clone you, drag you in. Done. I'm like a well-oiled machine now. Right, so you go here, 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 and here. No loading, no unloading, unload, no loading, and service. So you go there, 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 and that's it. Um, do you stop at Bunthill? I think you do. Again, I think this is an all-stopper until Punfingford. It's not Punfingford, it's Pewfingford. Unless I missed the N. Did I miss the N? No. Looks like it's just Pewfingford. And I'm uh, saying the wrong name. We do have a Punfingford somewhere, though, don't we? I'm sure we do. 
I recognise the name Punfingford. I'll have to check that. Uh, Tintford. And then up to here. And the reason I'm doing this is because we do switch over to the fast tracks for this section because we don't go around the bay. We go straight across the bay with this particular service. Like that. And then we cross back to the slow tracks. And we continue. So after... Do we stop at Flindingston? We do. What's our next stop after that? Setting head again. So we'll have to come up with some more services to stop at Chonwell and Slinding Head. I think I might actually extend this service because I've currently got it to terminate um, at uh, Kindinghatton Parkway, but I'm, I'm very tempted to extend it. It's just a question of where. Tell me the next one is Rending Head Cross, which is here. And then it's Bonston, which is here. And then we go through Fronningpool, through Frintford, and into Kindinghatton Parkway, which will eventually have a bus service into Kindinghatton. Now, <sighs> I'm tempted to extend this one further north because we don't have another northern, uh, we don't have a, a service that serves these stations on the northern side at the moment. So uh, I'm, I'm very tempted to, uh, to do that. It will end up with needing more trains. It's also a case of where's it going to terminate, because uh, we don't have any terminating platforms. Not even at Monningpool Falls anymore. So I think for now, yeah, because that's that's asking too much to go all the way up to Sonnington. So I think for now we'll just have it terminate here, and I'll extend it in the future if need be as uh, so you are unload no loading and you are no loading no unloading okay so that just about does it for this episode actually it's uh i mean even this section has been quite long half an hour plus the time lapse and uh, there's a lot going on we're getting all these trains out on the line um I will do that off camera. I do need to clone this one actually eight times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One other thing I didn't mention, these trains, these yellow trains, they're part of another new franchise which is currently called Coast West. I didn't want West Coast because that already exists. Uh, so I went Coast West. I'm trying to be clever with my names but I think I'm falling a little short of the mark on some of them. So. Uh, that's why we have the ideas list, so that I don't fall short of the mark. But anyway, I digress. That pretty much is it for this episode, though. Next time out, we are building that new line. As I said, it's going to be a two-track line, I think, the majority of the way. Uh, there will be a big interchange station. I believe I said it was going to be where it connects with the high-speed line. So we'll see if that's still the case when it actually comes to building it. But until then guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and of course if you're enjoying the series. Drop some comments down below with ideas for future episodes. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, I lose my words, it's a common thing these days unfortunately. Uh, if you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.